Hi, everybody. How you doing? Hey, Christian. Hey, how you doing, Matt? It's so strange to be in the same room with you this time. Was that, that's, no, wait, a, that, that's a human in the same space with us. It's real. It's real. It's oh, my goodness. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. Uh, Christian and I got back together to do the fifth macro challenge thanks for joining us we're really glad you're here yeah thank you so much yeah thanks for having me over in your beautiful studio and man it was a lot of fun actually working on projects together uh this is something we've been talking about for a long time and uh yeah. pandemic be damned we made it happen it was a blast it was a blast yeah there's there's nothing like collaboration and that was something that i was missing too it was a lot of fun so i just want to say hello to everybody um hi Tommy Thompson. Good to see you, Tommy. Uh, hey, Martin, how you doing? Please say where you're coming from, you're tuning in from in the chat. We really want to hear that. Um, and all of this other good stuff. I see a bunch of people have made their way in. So we had this great presentation all worked out for you. And you know how software updates happen? Well, guess <laughs> what? My, uh, my whole multicam setup got blown out of the water because there was a software update. Sorry about that. We we're going to show you all these different angles and stuff. I hate to apologize at the beginning, but I'm so I'm so disappointed about that. But we've got some great stuff to show you, and I don't think you're going to miss the other stuff. So why did I even mention it? Because because it just happened. So it just happened. It just, <laughs> just happened. happened. <clears throat> but here we are. But yeah. the band aids are fixed, and we're ready to go. Right. So. The show must go on, and it show is. Must go on. It is. So so here's what we did. Um, we ordered a whole bunch of cool stuff from the internet. Magnets, things. magnets, things that operate Did off of magnetism. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's like it was getting back into earth sciences, you know, and, and having a lot of fun playing with that and seeing what that would look like uh, with macro involved. Uh, so Christian, because of where he works, he got to borrow a whole bunch of Lawa lenses. So we got to shoot through the entire Lawa macro lens line. And that was fun. That was a blast. Uh, the first a... time I got to play with some of those lenses. Yes, especially a probe lens. The probe is, is so is fun. An oddity and yeah. really fun. Yeah, so really two things going on. We're exploring this deep curiosity with all of these different focal lengths. Uh, and at the same time saying, how cool is magnetism? Yeah. So and also how to interpret that in the macro way. Exactly. Exactly. So I need to share my screen. I want to I want to get right into showing um, some pictures with you guys. So let's go in here. And speaking of the probe lens, uh, the first thing that we, we started shooting was Christian and I we were working in the same room. And when we first started shooting, we kind of like split up a little bit. And he was working on the main stage. And I went over here and I started working on this crazy concoction where you can see the probe lens is going woo, out like a, I don't know, a probe from the, the front of the camera. And I took a, a Pavo tube light behind uh, these, what are they, iron filings? The iron filings. Iron it. filings with a high gauss magnet behind them. And I just wanted to see what this wide angle of view lens was like. And on the bottom of this, I have a focusing rail because you have to because it's macro. And the cast fine so I could have even finer control of it. And, and this is what I ended up making. And the, this is a full stack all the way through. And I think that's your 28 images on that one. Yeah, I was a 28. I think that's it's 28. Right. That's good notes, man. Yeah. Good notes. Oh, we took those notes and then we put them away. Yeah, they put them away. We're solving the other screen. Yeah. yeah, on the other screen that's not up right now. I'm sure I could pull that up. You know, yeah. While you're telling a story, I'll do that. So, so yeah, this was, this was kind of fun to work with that probe lens and a magnet and working vertically because the magnet, of course, sticks right to the steel of this uh, C-stand. So that just stuck to the side and I put the the uh, the light behind it. And that was that was a lot of fun and pretty simple stack there. One out of the three different ways to stack it worked. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think I think it was it was fun. And you know, it it's not quite the sharpness I was looking for, but in a lot of cases, you know, like the when you get in at 200% with macro, it's too far. You should be looking at it 100%. So yeah. otherwise you're looking at pixels instead of actual sharpness. So and the the probe lens is a very unique lens, by the way. Um, a lot of people utilize it for video, yeah. which I think that's something we could explore in the future. 
Um, it is not the easiest lens to work with. True. And, yeah, but it, uh, it helps because um, it's a, I believe it's F14 is its uh, basic aperture. Right. But it has little LEDs on the front that do help illuminate uh, your subject, which is um, in this case not necessary because you had the Pavo tube, you know, illuminate and everything. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, a it's, blast. it's a learning curve. I yeah. like it. Yeah, it was a blast. Uh, and meanwhile, I was, I was doing this over here. Uh, Christian, the mad scientist, <laughs> was working on the main stage. Christian, why don't you walk us through? What was wow. Going on okay. There? Yeah. We went a little bit sci fi on this one. <laughs> <clears throat> so you're looking at our stage, and we, we took a couple of notes from the Mandalorian and um, the new uh, LED wall, volume metric wall, they call them now. Um, instead of the old green screens, they're now projecting live animation and stuff like that for, for movies. So we took that idea utilize uh, Matt's very large television down here and post <laughs> an image that we shot earlier with a stack. And you can see that there's still the um, highlight around where Helicon um, kind of gave us a halo, which in right. this case doesn't bother bother us because we had the sci-fi idea in mind. Right. And we just started working the scene. And there's some background, uh, some BTS there of that. So this was a lot of fun. This was the first time in, in after Matt got through with the, uh, uh, with the, the probe. Yeah, with the eyeball, with the, with the, the purple eye there. <clears throat> brought the probe over to where we were working on this. And it, it was like setting up a miniature studio. It wasn't just like it is setting up a, a miniature studio. Um, and what was the story? Well, we decided to use that background image as our alien landscape and that had some really interesting oh yeah there's a close-up of the uh the background there there's Oops, gold yeah. and iron by the way these are just iron filings and when you're that close um with the with, with the, when you add a, a different color temperature light source to correct it. Yeah. yeah yeah when you add that golden light and you get that close yeah and we were able to really really dial in our stacks on that one um using the castell and you get this alien world full of gold looking boulders right so yeah. that's a cool background but we wanted something in the foreground by the way matt's going to show you maybe that all those iron filings are on this tiny little marble looking magnet that's what it was <laughs> it's a globe magnet this uh also a little bit spectro it's got this rainbow finish to it mm -hmm. so that was a lot of fun and that was a lot of fun so then what? So well, th then we added some of Matt's, uh, some really interesting handmade paper. I don't know where you got that from, but it's just gorgeous. And you'll see that uh, on the, go back. Was it? Yeah, I think there, there's a the, final image of that coming image. up. Okay, yeah. I, don't, I don't want to give too much away. Yeah. I don't want to give, you yeah. already got a sneak peek of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this, this one I, I thought was a lot of fun because we, we worked through different lighting scenarios. Yes. And, you know, what we started with here is not what we ended up with. Um, we ended up with what you see here, which is like a, a tube light on one side and a little square LED light with diffusion on the other side to create that split light. And then there's there's a third light with diffusion uh, on the opposite side. So when you get to the final, when you have specular surfaces like this, what you want to do is create large areas of specularity. And that's why having a diffuse light source helps with this a lot. And it doesn't necessarily need to be uh, a regular color, color temperature. It can be a hue. So we played with blending that. The red light is often an oblique angle to the right-hand side. And that's what gives the red rim light here. And then there's two different color temperatures and intensities going on here. The camera was set to daylight and the lights were set to 32 or 3800. I forget which it was. Uh, and different intensities so that you see it took something that was just silver colored and changed it into a gold color Yeah, by using color temperature control. And it, it just changed the entire flavor of it. And we ran with it. Yes. Yeah. All right. This will to be continued on to this be, image. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next up, I, I guess I was, I was still playing in the corner. Um, I, I wanted to see what would happen if I took the high gauss magnet and it's around here. It's underneath the ferrofluid, which we'll get to. And I covered it in the iron filings. And they just swarmed around it. And Christian has a picture we, we might show you later. I, I don't know if I have quick access to it, where it was really hard to get all the iron filings off the high gauss magnet, which is a very strong magnet, because it just clung with such ferocity to it. 
Uh, but I, I was working with uh, one of the other lens. I think that was a 65. I think that's 65. Yeah, the 65 millimeter. And I put it on top of the, the C-stand again because it's steel and it just stuck to it. And, and then I put a huge light source off to the right-hand side, like a three-foot um, round soft box. And <laughs> a rare selfie there, yeah. right? And then you can see in my glasses over on the right-hand side here, you can see that I took that Pavo tube and I set it to a gold color. So that would create a rim light. And you can see that happening on the edge here. Yeah. I create a rim light on the side. Um, and that ended up being this. I like that one. And yes, there's some Photoshop trickery here. I used uh, a fill to get rid of the post on the bottom. So it looks like it's floating in the air. But I intended to do that from the start. Right. Uh, but I put it in the corner on purpose also. So that I would have a, a dark gradient coming in from one side and a lighter gradient coming in from the other side. So I could play with the color and hue and create an out of focus depth to this one. Uh, and I thought it would be a lot of fun to, to work on that. And this was a good stack. Yeah, you know? this one came out nice. The texture is really fascinating. And I definitely shaped that explosion up at the top just by twisting and pinching to create that shape. And it was a lot of fun. And also, I just got to say, it feels good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very therapeutic. Yeah. It, it, it's good stuff. A little magnetic sculpture. And, you know, you get tired of it, you can squish it up and or yep. try to clean off your high gauss magnet, which takes a little effort. Yep. And then you can just sprinkle it back on and it'll kind of go this it, its own way like that. And this one, this one took, uh, oh, I guess, about 60 pictures yeah, to that. get through. And I believe I was at F8 to do this one. I shoot everything at ISO 100 when I'm in the studio. Um, and I think we should take a little departure right now. Um, one of the reasons that Christian came to my studio here is, I think if you caught the last one that we did, is his his uh, apartment building in Brooklyn is like Jello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's safe to say. Yeah, yeah. I've complained about that a couple of times on, online here. It, I mean, with all the stability that I have with my NovaFlex, um, <laughs> It doesn't counteract a wobbly foundation. <laughs> yeah. And you're on an island. And, and I'm on probably an island. vibrating from millions of, yeah. of people in subways and stuff. It's a little bit quieter up here in Catskill. Uh, so, and I have this 500 pound workbench that we put the stuff on. So that, that's a theme that we want to sort of come back to here. Um, we, the collaboration was human based where we did yeah. want to hang out together, but also there's a lot of practicality to it. Also, Christian wanted to get sharper pictures and you had one of two things that you did to overcome that. You tried to go with longer exposures and it didn't work out. Yeah, longer exposure is not my friend in my apartment. Right. Here, we can do longer exposures, but yeah. at home, I had to add more light to try to get a faster yeah. uh, shutter speed. Yeah. Or I had to use a flash. Yep. Mm -hmm. I forget. Which do we have? Did we get the, oh, did I do red eye? Oh, no, yeah, that's yours, right? Yet. Is this, I forget which one it is. Red eye should be the, the racking of the... Oh, okay. Yeah. So let's go back in time a little bit. Um, here is what it looked like to run through that last one. And this is on the focusing rail. So you can see that first shot that I did. And we're just going to push in and then pull out. So you could see when you do something like this, you should always start at the end. Because that end shot is the perspective that you're going to end up cropped to at the end of your macro uh, run. If you start out here and you don't frame it loose, you're going to have a problem. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to start it over again. So like this looked nice and I didn't give it room to breathe. And when I moved in, I lost a lot of the beautiful purple that I was going for. And I wish I had in retrospect I've done it once more and moved back some. Mm -hmm. So uh, a word of caution to everybody who's doing this. Um, maybe you start at your closest and frame it up so you have some breathing room. And then as you pull out, you're just going to be adding detail to that part in the center and the edges won't matter because it's going to crop out when you make your stack. That's hope, a good point. Hope that helps out. So I guess we'll go back into here. Um, yeah, so this one I did, the, I had learned my lesson and when I went to this one, I did leave more breathing room on purpose Yeah. Uh, so that I could make it float. And I did. I did. Now you could do that in camera if you had a metal post sticking out of the wall like that but i didn't think he wanted another <laughs> hole in his wall so we no. went with the stand yeah that's right you could if it was going straight <laughs> back but no no 
All right. All right. So this is the... So then we collaborate on the alien. Yeah. Yeah. And someone actually mentioned in the note or in the um, chat there that it looked like an explosion on the alien planet. And mm -hmm. we agree. And that's exactly what we thought when we were messing with this particular image. And this is similar to what we talked about, teased a little bit beforehand. But now you can see right there in the center, we have a lid. There it is. We got something going on over there. What's going on with that? I think I can show everybody. Show them. Let's see. I'll hop over to a little video here. It's going to be this guy. Yeah. So this is what it looks like looking through the camera. Um, and we got that. So now this is a, a going through the entire exposure sequence. Um, as, as Christian mentioned, we were inspired by uh, a, having a gigantic screen in the studio and using that as a backdrop. So we put the television behind this. And it's even easier with macro because, of course, your field of view is much smaller. So you don't really need a large display. Uh, this was just happened to be there because I use it for teaching purposes. And then we would just run through the entire focus stack on this. And as you're moving forward, that background, of course, moves with it. It's not like it's digitally controlled as if we're part of the Mandalorian team. You know? Right. Like, not yet. Um, not yet. Yeah. But you can run through and do your whole focus stack. And then we jumped in a little bit further. And you see when it gets out of focus, what it holds that a lot of other backgrounds that aren't emissive does is it has crazy cool highlights mm -hmm. so when it when it's something that's transmitting light the highlights just get really creamy yeah and there's that paper i was alluding to before which added to the alien landscape part of this yeah we got a little character a little ho scale i think he's a photographer and, and out of that package yeah now he's trapped in the iron filings of who knows what alien landscape <clears throat> and this is also what the the lower probe right and yeah. th this is why we have a little bit wider field of view. That particular lens um, gives you a wider view and macro. Um, it's, it's a very specialized lens. Like I said, there's some amazing footage out there. A lot of commercial photographers and videographers utilize this. But you can see that even though it's a wide field of view, it's still a macro lens yeah. and you still require a focusing rail. <laughs> yes, you do. You have to use a focusing rail no matter what. Because it's going to still have paper thin depth of field, right. no matter how right, right. wide it is. And here's here's just a, a view without taking single pictures. This is what it looks like to run in with video. Uh, so you can see just uh, using that focusing rail, that breathing that I was talking about, about how when you get to your closest focus, you should start there. Um, just for planning purposes, you can start at the other end if you want to uh, for the shooting. But if you start at the beginning, this is the, the probe lens has a focusing helicoid on the end of it. So you can change the focus once you're in there. And that's what we're doing right now without moving the rail. Yeah. And that's all the way back to the television. This yeah. is all the way back to the subject. Uh, so this was a bunch of fun that set up. And we'll come back to that part. Right. Sci-fi movie props. Get now. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly. So for this, we had... Um, we had a couple of lighting things here. We had uh, Forza, a Nanlite Forza 60B with a Fresnel lens and the, the barn door and grids. And it's almost perpendicular to the paper because we wanted to pull out the texture in the paper. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this, what would you set Luxley up over here? Cello. A Luxley it's cello. It's a Luxley cello. And you can see what temperature it's uh, set at. 4,300. But it's just a little bit of fill light. It's only 3%. It's really just adding just a tiny bit of color. Yep. Oh, and there's one more surprise. Right. Oh, that's the final picture. There we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, we had to warm up that uh, that that paper a little bit. So there's a, another. Uh, it's a Luxley. No, that's a Nanlite. It's a fiddle. That's a fiddle. Oh, yeah. yeah Luxley, Luxley fiddle. fiddle. Yep. Coming up from underneath the paper, giving that glow, which is a good idea. I think Matt put that one in there. Because mm -hmm. so otherwise, the paper would just seem a little dull. Yeah. It has a beautiful translucence. It's got a waxy base to it. Yeah. So it's gorgeous paper. Yeah, yeah. it really is. And that, that red... This red thing is actually the high gauss magnet covered in a magnetic sort of putty. putty. Yeah, like, like silly putty, but which you can stick to your refrigerator. We put it on there because it's so aggressive that when it's smacked against the opal glass, we didn't want it to crack. So we put this putty on there so that we re relieve some of the, the aggressiveness with which yeah. it pulls in. Yeah. And that's the final result right there. Mm -hmm. So we ended up with... Um, I think quite a pleasing result. Um, 
That one was 13, Martin, with that probe. Was it 13 images? I think that was only 13 images. Amazing. Yeah, because the probe de definitely has a different depth of field than some of the other lenses out there. Because it's a wider focal length. Mm -hmm. Yep. But it's still pretty shallow. Yeah. So, yeah, we got in there and, you know, we, we got focus all the way through. And, and we got that crispiness from the side, mm -hmm. from the Fresnel. We got the fill from over here and the slight translucence coming from underneath. Yeah. I think I came together pretty I good. think so too. I may have changed, you know, in retrospect, probably would have added a little more reddish light on this to mm -hmm. try to blend the iron filings with the, with the background, you know, with the mm -hmm. paper a little bit more. But yeah, this is fun. Yeah. So and was... By the way, all those spikes, that's natural. That's what you're seeing is a physical representation of the magnetic waves, basically. So really neat. Super duper. That was fun. Yeah. That was really fun collaborating on that one. Oh, my gosh. That was good. And, yeah, yeah, I, I, I mean, I just, I'll just dip out for a second and say this. Um, I am I'm a little bit crazy when it comes to this stuff. Uh, I... I, I've been collecting gear and create and objects for years um, because I have a deep curiosity and I want to satisfy that creative curiosity. So the things that I have in my studio, I didn't just buy outright, you know? So if you're, if you're concerned about having stuff to do this with, I just want to urge you every time you look at a crazy setup like mine, <laughs> start with what you have, you know, work with what you have. Yeah. I, I, I bought one thing at a time as I discovered things that I wanted to make better. And right. that's, that's the way that it works, you know? So, um, yeah, it just, you, you work your way through the things that you need to do. So, yeah. Yeah. And someone pointed out the little man left of center on the image. You're right. There is a little man there. In fact, I think we have a close above him. I think we're going to have a close up. Yeah. Um, oh, we'll oh, look at the top view first. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, this is, this is a good view of seeing like, there's uh, the opal glass with the iron filings with the little man and that's clamped up in the air and you'll see the light shining up from underneath in the distance of the lens to the subject. Mm -hmm. uh, in that, I do I have oh, this a better one view? That one's not the probe anymore. Not the change of 65, huh? Yeah, well, that's when we did the close-up of it. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, right. There, so, there we go. Yeah, so that's the 65 moved in super close. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it is a little man. So that's it, by the way, if you're looking for little figures, uh, model train stuff, um, HO scale is what I found. Yep. And, you know, they're, they're, they don't have the most detail on them, but uh, they really add some interesting scale to uh, to some of these images. I swear that's Vincent from Pulp Fiction. It looks like Vincent <laughs> from Pulp Fiction. <laughs> Oh my yeah. God. That's what I said when I got really close. I'm like, wait a second. Like, it's our man from Amsterdam. <laughs> so that was, yeah, we switched over to the other lens, which gave us even more, uh, yeah, even more uh, magnification. Right. So that was, that was a lot of fun to work into that one. Um, I think, Ooh. I think, oops, there's more video on that one. Let's check into that, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, there we go. Oh yeah. So this is this is kind of what it looked like to to run that. This is exactly what it looked like, actually. <laughs> yeah. So not just kind of, but is. That's how many it took a lot of images to to cover that because the depth of field is is a fractional. Let's call it fractional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so that's what it was like to do that one, and it worked out pretty darn good. Um, it just takes a little bit of patience and a lot of creativity. Uh, and we got that background on fire. Uh, so, so that was that was really the end of a really productive day of collaboration. Yeah, you know, and we're up here in Catskill together. So then we split up, and we said, you know what, let's let's work on some more things because we have like three three more weeks, four more weeks until the webinar. Uh, so we divided up some of the stuff. Mm -hmm. like Christian got some more of the stuff himself, um, and then we we went over and we started shooting things separately. So the next thing that I worked on was what was a, a little bit late in arriving yeah. to our shoot was the ferro fluid. Oh, that's so cool. I'm so glad you suggested this. This is just the most fun stuff wow. ever. Wow. If you're not familiar with ferro fluid, it is, as the name might imply, um, a, a, a ferrous liquid, a, a magnetic liquid. I believe NASA created this to help push 
fuel uh, from one pod to another and in zero gravity. I don't know exactly how that works, but there yeah. you go. Yeah. And they have to suspend it in some kind of like an oil. In fact, it looks just like oil when it's just sitting there in the bottle, but you'd throw a magnet near it and you'd get these. And you're again, seeing a physical representation of the magnetism radiating from that high gauss magnet. But this, this, you could see the field, the magnetic fields the shape of the magnetic it's fields. Nuts. It's mind blowing. And this, this picture was really quite simple to light. It was one diffused light source on the left and one diffused light source on the right. And since it's a pretty small area, they were like three inch, four inch, you know, like I think it was the Luxley Fiddle and maybe the Lidl Light 5C. They're both, yeah, that's a little NAN light thing. So like little tiny light sources. Mm -hmm. And deliberately, I set one of them to neutralize to be the same color temperature as the camera and the other one i set to be warmer and that's what this this is over here where you can see it it just changes into a different color that was the second light source yeah. and i'm sorry i didn't take any bts of this but it wasn't it wasn't that hard to figure out uh, but i it's really remarkable yeah. the focusing was the issue it's hard to focus when it all looks the same you yeah. know oily slick surface so I just, I ended up looking for sharp, yeah. sharp bits where there were specular highlights. Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing that really made sense to me uh, was, was that. Um, so in this case, Greg asked, is the magnet above or below? In my case, in this picture, the magnet is underneath. Right. In fact, I'm going to show you exactly uh, what it looked like because I've got it here. So, and by the way, if you are going to try to play with the ferro fluid, it's not terribly expensive. You can find it, get it on Amazon or whatever, but it is very, very messy. It stains Ew. everything. Like, and Ew. the reason why you don't put the magnet on top is because it will fly up like an <laughs> alien, you know, beast and Fa like everywhere. a face hugger. Like a face hugger, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, it's good to have a petri dish, and it's also really good to have uh, gloves, like black nitrile gloves. Yeah. And this is one of the high gas magnets. I'm not going to put it near the computer. And as soon as you do this, it starts to gather around it. Mm -hmm. And you could see as you move the magnet around underneath, yeah. you can get different effects. Right. So, and the interesting thing is Don't sometimes you when you pull it away, ah. those get taller <laughs> as you pull it away instead of closer. Right. So this is what I was playing with was that I actually had it. I had something soft in between to pull it away further because mm -hmm. it gets taller. Yep. And I'm not going to, no, I'm not going to let that pour <laughs> onto my computer. <laughs> uh, but that's what the ferro fluid looks like. It, and this was the shot. And then I was thinking, I wonder if he's here. <laughs> there's, there's a, sometimes uh, somebody who asked me if I'm going to do panoramas and macro. And I did. So mm. one shot, two shots, three shots, four shots across, right? But so cool. So I did the stack all the way through on this one, moved it over to the right because I had two uh, focusing rails at odds to each other, uh, perpendicular to each other. Another focus stack here, moved it over, 50% coverage. Another focus stack and moved it over again, did another focus stack. And there is the nice. stitched focus stack panorama. And I'm really happy with that. Yeah. Now I wish that I'd also gone up and done another one, but I'm really still kind of like totally, totally, totally happy with right. that. I think it was a fun, fun thing to do. Um, and yeah, it was it was just the same start and end point on all of these. So all I did was I did it by the numbers. I looked at the position on the focusing rail where I started and where I ended, and I moved to the same amount every time, and it was mechanical. You know, and at the end, this is a very organic result. Yeah. But yeah, that yeah. one came out really nice. Yeah, it made me want to shoot ferro fluid even more. Yeah. But you did some really interesting things with ferro fluid. Yeah, it's some fun. You did. Now I'm going to hand it over to Christian because he, <laughs> he, he went back to Brooklyn. I went back to Brooklyn and I did not have ferro fluid at the moment. I did order some uh, pretty much on the train ride back home. I did have some of the filings. Matt let me take some of those back, um, and I also ordered more of those. By the way, they come in like little salt and pepper shakers. You can ch -ch -ch right on your magnet. And this is a very simple setup. I really just had the same magnet that, uh, that Matt had. 
underneath a piece of white plexiglass and just dropped all the filings on there and they just splayed out the way they splayed out. And I really didn't sculpt it or move it around. Just kind of let it fall where they fall. Mm. And very basic lighting on this one. Um, there's an overhead light, a small one by one uh, Westcott, um, pretty much cranked all the way up. Again, remember, I don't, I didn't have the luxury of doing a long exposure. Right. That ferrofluid um, panel that Matt did, I think it was like one six or something like that. It was mm. pretty slow. So I had to bump the light, bump the ISO to 200. And I also have um, a Pavo, um, not a Pavo, a, uh, what's an end light? The four is a 60 coming off the side there with a snoot to, to narrow the beam and a little gel in front of it. You can see just a little bit of blue on some of the metal there in the center. Um, there you go. So it's just a little bit of color. I probably could have worked out a little bit differently, but I like the way it looked. And I, I did something. There's another image coming up and, and I'll talk more about this, but I was having an issue by over, um, overstepping my shots, I think. Mm. Yeah. I, I backed off a little bit. So this one really isn't as many images. What as, do you mean by overstepping? I think I shot, I, I was moving, um using the 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 fine control on the cast fine yeah cast yeah. fine in case you're not familiar with that that's this guy right here and if you don't have one you need to have one because it's just easy to move little tiny bits but i was kind of tiny tiny micro little movements and i believe i was adding too many images uh for helicon the uh, software that we used for for stacking and it was starting to have a confusion on some of my images which actually created some interesting results on itself but it's right. a different story so here i backed off a little bit i think that was f11 and i think this was 30 something images i'd have to double check right of course we can't tell what it was oh it will tell you this it'll tell you stack um from 44 images oh 44 all right there you go can't remember 44 more. images <laughs> nice yeah but that one came out not too bad in the background just to be honest it is a black tote bag that i have hanging on a, on a little stand brilliant <laughs> just let it fall off you can see brilliant brilliant yep brenda that's that's the nan light with the with the gel on there making a little blue yeah so that was a forza 60 right forza 60 exactly the gel yeah nice powered all the way up because <laughs> you were because I needed I needed all my light yeah, yeah. yeah. and then here's a, here's my uh, cluttered BTS there so behind the scene right um, I don't have the same size space to work on I basically have a small uh, looks like a little counter top um, probably only about four feet wide by about two feet deep and uh, that's okay. Um, I, you can see the light come down from the top. In this case, I decided, all right, if I can't do a long shot, let me try to do some flash. And so I'm utilizing um, the Bolt Series flash unit. And yeah, there's one. So you can remove these. They come with this, uh, a, a small um, ring that goes around your lenses if you want to put them that way. You can add up to, I think, eight at a time if you want to trigger them all. And that's really convenient so I can play some um, opposite of each other, uh, give it a little balance light. You can also, just like most flash units, but in this case, I can change the ratio uh, very easily with those heads. And it just makes it very convenient for me to move the light around and quickly dial in how yeah. much, you know, plus or minus I want. Yep. And that's another one of those little marbles with some filings on there. And I can see it. Yeah. yeah. And they're all little, little goofy on that particular. There's a snoot shot again, by the way. That's the right. same one that I used for the uh, for the blue. And notice my awesome uh, magnet stand. One uh, <laughs> metal paper clip. And gator clip. Gator clip. Yeah. That's it. Use nice. what you can use. Yep. And that's the Forza 60 with the snoot again, right? That's the yeah. Forza 60. And there's the results. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. Nice, right? That wow. one came out pretty well. Now, you notice it's a little different than the one you saw on the back screen. I did change the the appearance of the... You see how this one was a little mm -hmm. more kind of chaotic? Yeah. I didn't want all those extra things on the side. So I took an old wooden chopstick and was moving little iron filings off the top of the sphere there. And, so show everybody what you're doing. You showed me this before. Yeah, I was. I mean, essentially, I was doing this with the loop going... Eh, moving one little two little three little filings and still i couldn't get them all 
Yeah, thus is the nature of magnetism. <laughs> and it's so it's so tiny. It, it is so tiny. The sphere is <laughs> it's 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 a little marble. It's big, yeah. So it's fun. That was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. We were doing it with toothpicks here in the studio, too. Yep, right? Exactly. Well, toothpicks. Good choices. Good choices. Really Non-magnetic. Yeah. Not use tweezers. So this one, this is my iron forest, and this is the same iron filings. Uh, this is on a bar magnet, so it's about a three inch long by maybe a half inch wide, um, thin, thin magnet. And I just coated it with the iron filings until it got so heavy they started falling over on each other. And I uh, got real low, and I forget which lens this is. I believe this is the 100. Um, it won't say. It won't say. Unfortunately, Lawa lenses, they don't have electronics in there, so there's no exit data on it. You have to right. take notes, which I did not on mm. that particular image. Right. Um, but it's it's a two times magnification, uh, two to one, I should say. Right. And so able to get a lot of detail in there. And the background is just a printed card um, that has a gradient color from that, that purple to, to red. And uh, yeah. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Like hey, did I forget any videos? Yes, we did actually. Iron Forest. No, look at that. We're right there. Here we go. Let's play. This is your whole focus stack? Oh. No. So this is me attempting to do some video. Um, it's my first video attempt, if you will. And I was just really, really trying to finally um, rack the rail, <laughs> basically. So... I just purchased the uh, Castell, it was a Q, right? Yeah. With the quick release. So mm -hmm. I just purchased a Castell Q because I wanted a little bit longer range than the previous one I had. And um, using the, oh, there you go. Beautiful. Yeah. So this is exactly what I was doing with this, with the fine and just really trying to, <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, it's Always fine. release that, kids. Uh, really just trying to fine tune move that lens and rack it back and forth and it was just really a test but it kind of came out nice i mean and you can really see the depth of field as you're going through that forest right man macro makes for good video doesn't it? macro does make for good video if only we yeah. had more mm. <laughs> <laughs> so this particular one was so fair fluid is cool and Ferro filings are cool, but what if you put them both together? Then they got to be more cool, right? Wait, wait what? You you put the I just did. I just did. Fluid. I just put ferro fluid on the filings and just wow. worked with it. So what you're seeing there is the same kind of thing that we saw with Matt's landscape, you know, um, panoramic, and the other images you saw with the filings. But now it's coated with all that ferro fluid. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> and and yeah, blue. LED up on top there. I think that was the cello uh, working it, and also I had blue coming from the the from the from the side. Yeah, from the wow. side. This is a hundred and almost fifty image. I think one forty seven or something like that. It, it's it's up there. One hundred fifty two. One hundred fifty two. I was Dang. off by four. So this is the one I said before. I think I overdid it. Um, it came <laughs> out pretty well, but there's some interesting artifacts that Helicon. Uh, makes and if you look at the bottom right hand corner, it's a good example. It, I didn't have a Coke and Star filter on there. It's that's gorgeous. the way. Yeah, I, but it really looks neat. So that's Helicon not really understanding what to do with all those bright points of light, all those specular highlights. And I just fell in love with how this looked with all these little pinstripes and the little swirls. Macro light painting. It is like macro light painting. Which so need beautiful. To do. Yeah, so it came out really interesting. Wow. It's a little, little pools of... So you deliberately chose to keep those in. I deliberately chose to keep those in. Yeah, it's it's a choice. It's not a, an artifact. That's right. It's, <laughs> it's yeah. a feature. It's a feature. And that was a feature. <laughs> nice. So, yeah. Nice. That one came out kind of fun. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Do we have video on that one? I forgot. I think at the end. Okay. Right. All right, so, wow, um, what the heck is going on here? Back to the ferrofluid. So goofing around with the ferrofluid, and I had the magnet underneath, and I don't believe it was as strong a magnet as the, um, as the big ga high gauss one. And for whatever reason, I got these bubbles that popped up. And I'm like, oh, that's really beautiful. Look at that. Just the way the swirl, I guess the oil was, was refracting. And it looked like little planets. I mean, oh, it's a little 
surface of Jupiter or something. I don't know. So quick, 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 get some images. So shot a bunch there, and then also uh, took a few more shots afterwards. Oh wow! Um, but anyway, that one, yeah, I, I love it. It's simple. I like. I wish I would would have been up a little bit higher just to get more of the bubbles. But I really love that color. I like this angle. I really like this angle because it shows more depth. It shows it emerging from the inky black. It is, yeah. That's just, just oh, wow. Nice. Okay. Um, th this was just a, a departure like of that same idea that I had before where um, I took the high gauss magnet and piled on the iron filings and just used one really strong light source to create strong shadows and highlights and pulled it out as if it were an explosion. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if anybody's ever seen The Expanse oh. on this crowd, but like it's uh. from sci-fi. Like it, it's like some sort of biological explosion. It's just happening at a, a growth explosion, except this is metal. You know, oh. uh, Brandon Sanderson probably covered this too, but this was just a lot of fun to, to make. And of course it requires a lot of stacking, but here's the funny thing is when you get in close on these, you start to see that they're just like little round pieces tiny. of metal yeah it, it's like if you break off the the tiniest piece of you know pencil lead from your mechanical pencil and mm -hmm. stack them all together that's kind of what you're working with it's crazy yeah it's fine beautiful ah uh, end is it i think it is okay well it's not the end you know why it's not the end why you well tell. um when christian and i uh, got back together he came up yesterday um, we were looking through all of the things that we had and all the BTS that we had. Let me just put it this way. We got inspired. You did. We did get inspired. Um, we're going to premiere something for you guys that is, uh, it's not that old. It's, <laughs> it's, it's very, it's very, you know what, actually before that, I'm sorry. Oh yeah. I have one more thing to show. Christian shot some really interesting video. Um, and this is going to be a, just a hint of what's to come. So, so just to, to set this up, this is a normal, whatever, screw. Machine screw. Yeah, machine yeah. screw. It's on the high gauss uh, magnet. Actually, I have something in between, so it wouldn't get Stunk. messed up. And uh, yeah, as soon as you get the ferrofluid anywhere near, it draws itself to... Down the threads? Yeah, well, down the threads. I was expecting it to go down the threads, but gravity is no match for magnetism, apparently. Oh, look at that. See how it pulls up? You, you can see where my light sources are, by the way. <laughs> Look but it's at like that. a weird jello. I don't know what you would call it, but it was just fascinating. Yeah. And after I was done, drop by, I'm using these little pipettes or pipettes, whatever. They're like little plastic uh, uh, eyedroppers. Just so I can kind of. There it goes. He finally gets oh. too heavy, and, and the magnetism part of it at the tip of that wasn't strong enough to hold it. That's but then it started pulling up at the bottom of the of, of the base and have the smaller uh, 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 spikes uh. coming up. I just think it's fascinating as heck. I love it. And, and then I took a little glass straw and blew on it, and you can turn it, and let it spin. It's very viscous, very interesting. Yeah, beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Well, that's that's one. Yeah, and and then you know they. The next, the next part is going to be mind blowing. So it lives. It's true, Martin. It lives. It lives. <laughs> so the the next thing that happened was we were uh, we were looking at all the wonderful things that that Christian put together, and I said, let's make a video. Uh, so we sat down and uh, opened up DaVinci and started and picked a piece of music, and you guys get to see it. That's it. World the, premiere. The world premiere of the first ever music video. The, for the macro challenge and that have made for the macro challenge love it first buckle up here we go we're going to turn off our video for this one <laughs>
So what do you think? Not bad, huh? Did we do okay. I like it. I like it a lot. That was, that was fun, fun, man. That was a lot of fun. It was just a lot of fun. Whew. Yeah. That was, I, I'm, I'm sure I have a pun loaded up somewhere, yeah. <laughs> but that that was just a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We had a lot of fun doing it. Mm -hmm. But you should, right? Um, just like the last webinar we had with with Alan, um, he said, "If you're not having fun, you're doing you something wrong." wrong. Yep. So, I, I agree. So there you go. Um, if, if it's work, it's work. Yeah. So don't, don't work too hard unless it, you're like, you're pushing your boundaries and enjoying it. So, mm -hmm. um, so, so let me, let me go take a look at the Q and a to see if uh, we saw anything. Um, Greg, thank you for pointing out the little man to the left of center. Um, <laughs> appreciate that. Yep. And I think we covered whether the magnet was above or below. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, Sell it to crayon as a Christmas video. That's yeah, that could be interesting. <laughs> that yes, is, that's a it good does idea. look like little crayons popping up, doesn't it? Wow, wow. So, so yeah, it, I think I saw someplace. Uh, somebody asked, "Where did you get the ferrofluid?" Um, I'm sure that you could go to someplace like Edmund Scientific, um, or you know, if you just like look for someplace that provides school supplies or something like that. We went the very pedestrian route and went to Amazon. Yeah. Um, you know, like everything was easily found there. If you just type in magnet and start following the related items or high gauss magnet, you'll start to find all those. You'll things. get all sorts of magnetic putty and little films and weird things. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. So we, we will, um, when we post the notes for this on the replay, we'll put some links to some of that stuff or the names of those things. So if you guys want to try this yourself, you can. Yeah. So uh, we'll ask as by show of, by show of votes, in the, the q a here we want to find out if you guys thought this was so fun and you want to do something similar we could get back together and do an image review so let us know in the comments if you want to do that and i'll invite christian back in you know, a couple few weeks or something like that depending on how many uh, responses we get we could take a look at uh, your pictures and we could you know have some fun talking about how they're made uh and perhaps technical issues too yeah. uh you know and and all the things it takes to make doing those things. So let us know because uh, we'd be delighted to do something like that. Agreed. That'd be a lot of fun. Yep. Um, yeah. So what else? I mean, like in, in wrap up, I think uh, a lot of the important things, we didn't cover a lot of the technical here because we have before. Um, but just the basics when it comes to macro, uh, you need a really solid foundation. That's it. You need what, what's your uh, catchphrase for? If it touches time? the ground, don't cheap out on it. Yep. Because it affects your quality of life. And, uh, you know, so I just bought a new mattress. I did. did and I, ha I had to follow my own. <laughs> okay, now here's my, I have to, I'm just my aside. I had gotten some memory foam mattresses, mm -hmm. one or two, and I had regrets. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Matt, listen to yourself. And I bought a quality mattress and it's been better ever since. So same thing with your tripods, you know, but having a nice solid bench like the one we're, we're using right now, which is what we shot on before. Mm -hmm. Um, having a tripod system that is a system and not just a tripod, yeah. you know, being able to switch out those mini legs for the tall legs and putting it on the surface that you're working on so you can shoot down. Yeah. It's gold. Yeah, It's gold. And then being able to use a precision focusing rail that doesn't bounce around or loosen up at the wrong times uh, that has the right gear ratio for you to do the magnification that you're doing yeah. or something you could grow into. Right. So, I mean, someday... I know you and I talk about this all the time. Someday we're going to own and or use the, the Kestel Micro. <gasps> yeah. Oh, yes. And and have I some more it. fun with the, the electronic <laughs> focusing rail. Because once you've done a couple thousand focusing rail shots, you might desire a tool like that. You know? Yeah. So, That'd be fun to work with. Yeah. Yeah. But in the meantime, until such time, you know, something like this is... And you saw how smooth it was, by the way, the, um, on that couple of rack focuses that we moved in and out. Yeah. Um, it's this is the way you want to go. Uh, there's a lot of different versions, by the way, of the Castell. Um, like I said, I just moved up to the Q because I wanted the extra distance and it has a built in quick release plate. I find that to be really beneficial for my yes. workflow. Yeah. Um, but use what you have. Now, like, like Matt started off saying at the beginning of this, don't get overwhelmed by looking at all the gear we accumulated together. Yeah. I brought some of that gear in to make even more lights and more things happen, yep. you know, and that was fun. Not everyone has opportunity, but everyone can buy a flashlight. No yeah. one can, you so know, true. so just, just have fun with it. Yep. 
I think that's the best advice we can say. That's the word of the day is fun. And, and that's what we're doing together here. It's true. You know, like it's, we knew what we knew coming into it and we know more now. Yes. And more soon. That's the journey. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's great. I don't see a lot more questions. I do see a lot of people saying more, please in the formative that we're in affirmative that we're going to do more. So yes, thank you. There is more. So if you have, if you have great ideas, you're seeing this live, put it in the comments. If you're seeing this on replay, let us know what sort of topics you might want us to explore in the future. We're open to ideas. Yes. Um, but I could say with authority, Christian's coming back. Nice. Yeah. Nailed um, it. Alina asked if we're going to list the equipment in the video. Yep. Yep. I take great care before I post the replay notification emails every time. That's me that does that uh, to list all of the objects or tools that we use in these things. So that's why it might take a day or two for me to catalog all of those things and make sure that we got them. Yeah. Uh, so thanks for asking that, Elena. And thanks for being here. I think that's the first time I've seen your name. Um, wow. It was a blast. Yes. So this is this is the, the end. Christian, thank you. Thank so you, much. Matt. Always a pleasure. This, this is a human. It's shaking hands with a human. Like real 3D like, life and everything. Like, I love it. Hey. <laughs> you know, it's like it feels good to can't do to that on Zoom. Have that camaraderie again. So um Thank heavens things are sort of tipping in the other direction. Let's hope that they continue to do that. Agreed. Um, without adding that sobering thought, yeah. Christian, it's always a blast doing this with you. Thank you, Matt. Thank Thanks you. for having me again. And thank you, Noflex, for uh, you know building beautiful stuff that I love to work with because it's a lot of fun, as <laughs> I'm going to say again. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It it really is. is. Yeah, thank you, Martin and crew over at Noflex. Yeah. Um, you make a lot of the crazy stuff that we do possible. So we appreciate you. True, true. Um, and otherwise, I think I see one more red thing showing up here. Thanks, Joan. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, Brenda Penty. Thank you, Doctor. Hey, Joe. Good to see you, Joe. And Tommy and Tayo. Oh, okay. Do I find Tayo has a question here? Oh, nice. Do you find that APS-C cameras give a better field of image than full frame? Hmm. I prefer the quality of a full frame image. You can get. Uh, you can use different focal lengths with APS-C cameras, or you can just set your full frame camera down to the APS-C setting and have a narrower field of view. The problem that I usually have is getting more in the frame, you know, so I think with a smaller chip, it's actually a little bit more challenging, but I go back to this thing where, um, use what you have until the tool fails you. Yeah. So if you have an APS-C camera, use it. And use it until the boundaries are so hard that you want to overcome them. And then go look into something else. Perhaps rent a full frame and see if that works better for you. You know, use the same stuff underneath it. You can use the same focusing rail and tripod, right? True. That is true. Yeah. So good question. Thank you, Tayo. Uh, Martin and Brenda, thank you for being our support. We appreciate you. And I think, I think that's really the end. I think that's so, it this time. Everybody, you're the best. We appreciate you. I'm going to say goodbye now <laughs> i think at some point i can find the button that says goodbye <laughs> we got one more chat they're, they're hiding time it. for one more chat i have one more chat is it? who said who said what i don't know there it is uh, seems a matter of space between the lens for lighting that has a lot to do with focal length yes mm -hmm. tayo i'm agreeing with you there uh the shorter your focal length the less distance you have between your lens and that so yes if you use a shorter uh, an aps-c camera you're going to use a shorter focal length, kind of, right? You know, but I, I often use a hundred millimeter, um, and it, this hundred millimeter macro lens does go to two to one, and I put it on a bellows, so that gives me a lot of room to perform lighting in there. And yes, that really does matter. So, yes. good point. All right, all right, everyone. Till next time. Till next time. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Keep shooting. Take care.